اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم how to read a research paper and store relevant information impact of entrepreneurial leadership on project success mediating role of knowledge management processes so what is proposed in this paper is uh, that how entrepreneurial leadership influences knowledge management processes which is the mediating variable and then how knowledge management processes influences project success whenever you start reading a paper It's not just enough to read the paper. The problem is that the majority of us, what we do is we are we keep on reading rather than keeping and storing relevant information. What you need to do is you need to store relevant information rather than just reading the paper because at the time when you need to retrieve that particular information and put it in your writing, uh, your me- memory won't serve it. so it's always a good idea to store the relevant information so whenever you open a good paper it actually starts with an abstract an abstract is actually a summary of your research paper if you are publishing in emerald or sage or springer or any other databases every database has got their own format of uh, the abstract this is a paper published by emerald so they put their own design or style or format of the abstract so first you will have to write under a heading purpose the purpose of the study now in this case the purpose of the study is drawing on the knowledge based view so based on this theory the study investigates the impact of entrepreneurial leadership on knowledge management processes and further examines the mediating role of knowledge management processes on the linkage between entrepreneurial leadership and project success So this is the purpose of the study what this study intends to achieve what this study intends to do next is design methodology or approach this actually summarizes the methodological approach used in this study or the research design for this study survey data were collected from 304 project workers in software projects and the proposed relationships were assessed through smart pls structural equation modeling tool the next part of the abstract is the findings so what did you find after reading or sorry after conducting this study or what did the authors found after conducting this study in this case the study found a significant impact of entrepreneurial leadership on knowledge management processes and project success so what the study found was that entrepreneurial leadership has a significant impact on knowledge management processes and project success the study or the analysis also revealed that am processes significantly impact project success while ela impact project success indirectly through am processes so all relationships were significant after the findings well mostly it's in emerald in others uh, there are few databases that mention the originality in the abstract while in majority of the cases uh, in abstract in other databases you won't find, you won't find originality as a as a description in the abstract the relevancy of the research stems from the scarcity of research on entrepreneurial leadership so what does this originality or value mean as we read this first statement we come to know that originality or value is basically focused on what's new in this particular research what is it that these researchers have done as has not been done previously while studies on the role of leadership or as a predictor on ka of km are significantly limited additionally there is a scarcity of research on the impact of km on project success this is one of the earliest studies that investigate the interrelationship among ka uh, sorry el km processes and project success so while we read all these statements these three four lines we come to know that originality or value is basically referred to as the limitations the gaps in existing research so originality or value of your study stems from what is missing in existing research what are the limitations of existing research what is it that existing research has not done that you are doing or you are going to do so after that 
we have read the abstract. The next step is reading introduction. But before going into detail as to how to read the introduction, the step is or we should look into what information can be stored or shall be stored from this particular paper or any other paper that we are reading. So there could be a lot of information that could be stored. And obviously, this list that I have created here is not exhaustive. You can have much more to store. But these are the most important things that one should store. So you should store the title, the objectives, the research question, hypothesis, the theory that they have, that they have used, the independent variables, the dependent, the control variables, the mediator, the moderator, what gap or gaps the study address the sample size of the study who are the respondents what were the results and what were the limitations and future research directions you can obviously add more to it for example let me add notes to it for example you want to add personal notes with respect to the paper as to when you are reading you a certain idea maybe have come to your mind or certain uh, maybe uh, critique of the paper might have crossed your mind so you can put this into the notes column Obviously, you can further divide it into limitations as a sep separate column and future research directions as a separate column. You can add further more uh, details to it as the, uh, for instance, uh, value of the paper. So, what is uh, or value of the paper or value of the concepts that this particular variable or this sorry this particular paper is addressing. So, whenever you are reading a paper, actually the paper starts with value. Here the value means why this particular concept is important to study in the field of business management. So what you can do is obviously you can add another column. Let's say value. So obviously this list is not exhaustive and you can add more columns as you deem fit. Now let's go for how do you store this information. So you start with serial number so you can give any serial number, the number that you want. The next step is adding title. So in this case, let's add or read through the paper and store this information so that you have an idea how to store this information. Let's say I want to copy this and put it in here. So you can format it. So this is the title of the study. Now what are the objectives of the study? In this case, let's say this is the objective or overall objective of the study, that this is what the study intends to do. So you put it in objectives, format it so that it's, uh, the readability is easier when you are trying to retrieve the information. What are the research questions or hypothesis? Now there are no research questions mentioned, but there are hypotheses. So let's see what are the hypotheses. This is H1, so let's copy H1. Moving on, and these are H2, H3, and H4. This is your H2, and then that is your H3, and this is your H4. Now you have stored the hypothesis, all of them, in this particular cell. What theory did this paper use? Now, if you go back and while you were reading your abstract, you found out that drawing on. So, this is something or this phrase is basically used with the theory. So, what they have used is they have used the knowledge based view, or the theory is knowledge based view. The underlying framework or theoretical framework is knowledge based view. So, let's go with here knowledge dash based. Now, what were the independent variables? As we know, it was under new real leadership what was the dependent variable it was project success were there any control variables no if there would have been control variables you would have seen them here in the model so normally the control variables are your demographic variables and they are normally influencing this dependent variable here what was the uh, mediator? Knowledge management processes. Any 
moderators? No. Let's say, let's write none here. So we know that we are not missing any data. So what gaps did this paper address? Next step is identifying or adding the gaps addressed. So gaps addressed by whom? Gaps addressed by the authors of this paper. So what gaps did they address while they are they were actually proposing this paper? So let's let's go back a little and let's see the introduction. So if you see the first paragraph of the introduction, so whatever paper that you are looking into, whatever paper that you are reading, the first paragraph primarily focuses on a value. And in here the value means why is it important to study these particular concepts in the field of maybe business and management, maybe management, maybe social sciences, maybe education, maybe project management. So if you read through the first paragraph, it actually highlights the need or the importance of these variables. The variables or importance of these concepts. For instance, business practices around the world have raised some difficult issues for managers with respect to leadership styles. Leaders should concentrate on taking initiatives, risk taking and building competitiveness in order to achieve goals and guarantee a sustainable or sustained competitive advantage. What, what is it doing or what is this line or what does this line say? This line mentions the importance of leadership styles and leadership which is the independent variable in this study. A knowledge based team then the next step is or actually shifts its focus on knowledge management or knowledge based view or uh, KM processes as to why they are important and how later how entrepreneurial leadership could influence knowledge management and why is it that knowledge management could be fostered based on entrepreneurial leadership. So you see these first two or three paragraphs depending on the paper or the need of the study or how how uh, or, or the existing research on the concept. Entrepreneurial leadership is fairly a uh, new concept. That's why you see that the author has mentioned at least two, three paragraphs on the concept and how it could relate to knowledge management and why this concept is important. Now, moving on, once they have identified the need or value of the concept and how these variables could be related with each other, what they do is they move next towards existing literature has identified in the number of gaps or a number of gaps pertinent to the relationship between these three variables. So once you have identified the value of these concepts, what concepts? Entrepreneurial leadership, knowledge management and project success and how or why is it important to relate these concepts? Once they are through this particular section, once they have written about the value uh, of, the, of these concepts, value of these concepts in a particular area or importance of these concepts, the next step is to focus on what gaps are prevalent pertinent to these concepts and why is it important to study these concepts. So, once, once they mention that so these are the gaps that should be addressed, what they do is, or normally the style should be that one should write, okay, first, this is the first gap that we found, or this is the first gap that needs to be addressed. This is the second gap. This is the third gap. Now, a lot of time people ask this question as to how many gaps are enough. I say that it's it, at least there should be three, two to three gaps, must. If, if you've got a very strong gap, for example, variables that have not been studied before, concepts that are very new, with very limited research, maybe two, three, ten papers at most, well, even one gap might be enough. Or if you are going for data that is multi source, or if you are checking dietic relationship, even one or two gaps are enough. But if that's not the case, if, if, if the concepts that you are studying are fairly new, if the concepts that you are study, uh, are studying have not been studied in greater detail but have been studied in existing research and you are looking at the mechanism of impact or moderators, it's always a good idea to have at least three to four gaps just to be on the safe side. So in this case, let's see how the gaps are expressed. So here is the first gap. So what you write or what you do is you write first, then although the interest in EL has been growing, the concept of EL is still significantly underdeveloped. Now, when you are writing gaps, you have to express the need for the study. You have to mention or express the limitations of existing research. 
it's not just enough that you mention that okay this variable has not been studied in greater detail you have to support your arguments with references various parts of leadership literatures have yet to permeate the field of entrepreneurship so leadership linked with entrepreneurship and the concept that emerged was entrepreneurial leadership well there is very little literature as to how entrepreneurial leadership works how does it influence the organization what are the outcomes of entrepreneurial leadership so this research or this part of literature related to leadership literature is very limited so the first step that is addressed or actually referred to is the limitations of or the limitations of entrepreneurial leadership and these are fairly latest references strobel uh, and others 2018 harrison 2018 now this is the first gap or this was the first gap now the second gap so what you do is you write second researchers have recently begun to investigate the role of leaders in knowledge management so now this gap is relevant to or related to that first gap was actually only on or only related to leadership entrepreneurial leadership now this second gap is relative relationship between leadership and knowledge management so gaps pertinent to the relationship so this is a journal gap not related to entrepreneurial leadership but a journal gap which says that okay a leadership or general gap which states that uh, leadership and knowledge management there hasn't been much study on how leadership influences or relates to knowledge management existing research has assessed the impact of leadership on limited number of km processes so the influence or the relationship between leadership and km processes is significantly limited sade and others 2017 stressed the impact or stressed that the km processes in particular knowledge sharing has been well researched so so in, in here what you see is what has been done in existing research so whenever you are mentioning the limitations what you need to do is you need to mention what has been done in existing research and from there on you obviously get your limitations so masade stressed that came processes in particular knowledge sharing has been well researched so this is one area or one processes one process that has been ex- uh, extensively researched Hence, the present study has taken into account or consideration four KM processes. So, this particular study actually will focus on other KM processes as well. Apart from knowledge sharing, it focuses on other three as well, which are knowledge acquisition, knowledge st- uh, storage, and knowledge utilization. So, the first gap only related to entrepreneurial leadership. The second gap, relative gap, how leadership would influence. KM or KM processes. Now look at the third gap. The relationship again a relative gap. The relationship between leadership and organizational performance is studied in light of different mediating variables. Okay. Now you are making an argument. If you are making an argument in your study, you need to support it with the reference. The direct relationship between EL and project success can be questionable. Now what what the author is trying to see her here is. that existing research has assessed the impact of leadership on organizational performance now if we look that leadership does influence organizational performance we can obviously put forth this argument that leadership will influence projects or pro- the success of the project as well because the success of the project is the measure of performance of the project to a certain extent although the two terminologies are different Or, uh, or the authors have mentioned that project success and project performance are two different concepts. But for now, let's uh, use it as synonyms just to, to, to develop an understanding of the gaps. Existing research has called for an assessment of KM processes as mediating variable that would explain the impact of leadership on different organizational outcomes or organizational level outcomes. Now, existing research by these people, Chang, Nassar. Lakshmandi, they have called for using knowledge management processes as a mediator between leadership and organizational level outcome. Now, project success or project performance is uh, an organizational level outcome, and entrepreneurial leadership is uh, uh, a form of uh, leadership. 
So this is the third gap. Now moving on to the fourth one. The impact of PM has been investigated on project based outcomes. Now uh, these are project based outcomes. Existing research has evaluated the impact of limited number of CAM process. Again, uh, whereas leadership was obviously focused on, or the influence of leadership was focused on knowledge sharing, same is the case with the relationship between CAM processes and project success. So there is a there is need to further research on how different CAM processes could influence project success. Now again, if you see these limitations or gaps, whenever the author is identifying these gaps, they are supported by a reference in this case key Bavik et al 2018 now once you have identified these gaps uh, what you can simply do is you can create a summary of these gaps and put it in here in this particular set for example first limited studies on article so this is the first gap. I've just summarized it. Now the second gap would be or is actually limited uh, research on KM processes or oh, sorry leadership and KM processes. So on and so forth, you can mention the third gap and you can mention the fourth gap as well. So this is how you read the gaps address and store that particular formation. Now the next step is, if this is particularly important and I think that this should also be added as a column. And this talks about the contribution of the study. Now, failure to write contributions of the study will actually hamper your study or hamper the publication of your study. So once you've identified, okay, these are the gaps in existing research, you should mention how are you going to contribute to existing research by filling these gaps. Now, research intends to fill the identified knowledge gaps and in doing so, you make several contributions. So what are your contributions? First, the study extends the limited research on, on, the, on the understanding of entrepreneurial leadership. Since there was very little research on entrepreneurial leadership, the study will help develop an understanding on entrepreneurial leadership and its impact on project success. Our study is among the first to consider EL as an important antecedent to project success. Now, the second gap is the study investigates whether EL can serve as an important predictor of KM process. These contributions are actually stem from or are based on these gaps that have been identified. Third, the study further assesses whether KM processes mediate the relationship between EL and project success. Now, how does this influence or how does this help? Now, there are two aspects to writing a contribution. First is what needs to be done. So there is a there is a video on contrib study contributions. Uh, you can watch that as well. So there are two aspects to writing contributions of a study. The first one is what so what are you doing? But this is not actually a contribution to existing literature. You state the contribution of your study by explaining why this particular thing or why adding this variable or that variable is particularly important. So the aspect of why should not be missed when you are writing the contribution. So third, the study further assesses whether KM processes mediate the relationship between EL and project success. This is the work aspect. What are you doing? What, 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 what is it that has not been done before? So KM processes have not been yet or have not been studied previously in the literature on the relationship between EL and project success. But this is the work aspect. You have to write why this is important in order to highlight your contribution. Now, this is how the authors have done it. This would help in providing a basis for understanding the mediating mechanism through which EL affects knowledge management processes and ultimately result in a successful project. Understanding the mechanism that lead to effect of EL on project success would help to articulate a better theoretical understanding of this relationship. Now this is the why aspect. This is how 
you write why a particular or why a study in certain relationships is important. Again, what you can do is, for instance, for me, for this, let's, let's for now just copy this one contribution. What you can do is you can just summarize these contributions and put it in here. And now, what I've done is I've just like put in one. The next is sample size. And as we know, there were 304 project workers in okay uh, here it is you can write project workers in IT. What were the results of the study? Well it's plain and simple what you can do is okay from literature review you can take out the definitions of each concept. So just uh, whenever you are mentioning these variables here as independent, dependent, mediator, or moderate, what you can do is just copy the definitions from here and put it in there. So later you do not have to go back to the paper and search for definitions. So for example, if you are writing, writing entrepreneurial leadership, just add a column here and see the definitions. Do you have a definition here? Okay, let's see if you've got a definition here. So okay, this is uh, more or less the definition. by McGraw and Macmillan. And similarly, you can find other definitions here as well in the text. Or if you find anything important that you think that uh, will be uh, or could be used in your own study, just put it in that particular document. Create a separate column or put it in notes wherever you want to. This is your research methodology. This is your measurement model whereby you mention about the results of the analysis, but that will obviously can come later. There are videos on, as well on the channel. Now here are the findings. So now these are the findings of the study. But instead of reading all these findings here, what you can do is just go at the top. And here, here are the summarized findings. So just copy these findings and they will help you write the discussion section. Here you put in the findings. Or the results. So, what are the limitations and future research deficit? This is very important if you are proposing your own study based on this particular study. So, just go at the end of it here. Then, what you will find is every paper uh, in the databases like Sage, Springer, JSTOR, or other good da uh, databases, you will find limitations and future research directions. If you can't find them, they might be merged with the conclusion. So, what you do is just Press Control F and write limitations, and you will get to the limitation section. The study has certain limitations that must be acknowledged. First, the data has been collected from the employees of the software industry in Pakistan. Therefore, the model should be replicated in other contexts. Now, this is uh, if you are just basing or using this particular limitations to develop your own study, this is particularly limited gap. What is a strong gap? A strong gap is something that is based on new relationships. So you should propose a new relationship. So where are these new relationships in this these limitations? Secondly, in the current study, only one leadership style has been tested. In future studies, other leadership styles such as, okay, now this is one more gap, a very strong gap. Authentic leadership, new variables are being proposed, but just writing that, okay, these variables should be studied is not enough. This actually explains the what aspect not the why aspect. So you need to explain why authentic leadership, why smart leadership and why charismatic leadership should be tested with knowledge management processes. Finally, in future studies while with knowledge management process, knowledge management approaches shall also be taken into account as mediators. So these are particularly new relationships that have been proposed or the authors have asked to test these relationships. So what you can do is just simply copy them from here and put it in here. Now what you can do here is, once you have put in all these papers here, if you are proposing a new proposal or, or a new model for your study, latest 10 to 15 papers would be good enough. So once you have put in 10 to 15 papers, take a printout, read all what you have done. And based on what you have read, go, go through it, read again and again, maybe two, three times, till that you understand what concepts have you mentioned. And then use these limitations in future research directions and the gaps to propose your own models. Now, 
Why should you keep an eye on these gaps that the existing research has addressed? Just so that you do not propose something that has already been done. So I hope this would have cleared how to read and store information from a journal article into an Excel sheet and further use it.